Hi there, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the RVT in a practical way and how you can blend an object, for instance here this cliff uh, with the sand and then of course from with the sand of the landscape material and of course how you can blend. You can see here I can blend from the bottom to the top and I can change the contrast and everything. And I'm going to show you how to do this from scratch, uh, from an empty level, and let's get started. So we start totally from scratch with a new level. And what we do is we assign or create a new landscape, all with the default settings. And what we also assign is then a sun and sky system. This can be activated in the plugin sections, changing here my exposure to 10, changing the sky atmosphere, Maya settings. So we have a clearer picture. And once this is done, basically I save all, and this is the level tutorial, RVT tutorial. So what else do we need to consider? How do we get started? Of course, we also would like to assign to our landscape a material. I just use for the mega scans from the mega scans assets a surface material, which is the sand material here, and I'm going to assign it. I changed the tiling here to 0 0.15, so it fits a little bit better to the landscape. That's basically it. The first step, we need to create RVT textures. RVT stands for Runtime Virtual Texture. So what I do is right mouse click on the textures, you find here Runtime Virtual Texture. You assign it, RVT, and the first one we call Landscape. When you do that, open it. You see here, uh, Texture Resolution, I changed this to 10, so I have 1024. Um, um, and the size of each virtual texture tile, I leave it to 56. So that's a pretty good uh, textile density. The virtual texture content st uh, is base color, normal roughness, and specular. We save it. Now the second virtual texture we need to create is for height information. So textures, runtime virtual texture again, and we call it RVT height. Now we double click and what we have to change here is instead of base color, we change the world height and I also change the resolution size of the virtual texture and size to 10, which is 1024. In the landscape, we want to select the landscape and we search for virtual texture. And what we have to do is we have to assign these elements in the, uh, and add two array elements. So you click on the plus icon here and add an element. And then from the drop down menu, you can select now the height. Now we do the same. We click the plus and change also the landscape RVT, what we just created. So once this is done, you can save everything. And the next important step we have to do is also on the level is to create virtual texture volumes. So when you click the plus here, you see here on the volumes, you can create a, a runtime virtual texture volume. And I call this runtime virtual texture volume, RTVV, and call the first one height. And when the height is set, you basically select also here the height RVT, what we created. And now we have to do the same for the landscape. So on the volumes, we call the second one RTVV landscape. And then you assign all the RVT landscape here. So when we check our level, then we can say we have been doing our job and we have been setting up everything. But let's see if this works and in what issues we are going to run if we're starting to plant then objects or materials with it. So a 3D asset I also downloaded for this tutorial is the sandstone cliff. That is a huge asset. I just drop it to my canvas and make sure I positioned it at zero, zero and X, Y. And as you can see, this is how it looks. There is no blending at this current stage because the materials 
are not set up. So let's have a look. The first material I'm going to change is the sand material. That is the landscape material I was assigning. So again, when you double click that material and you open uh, the attributes, this is how it looks. As you can see, this is the base material, but we are missing something. We have to make sure that virtual texture information is going to be assigned. I prepared this already here and I'm not in this tutorial going into the details what this uh, is about. You can reproduce it, but you can also download my file or you can just download my material functions and implement it into your project. So basically briefly explained, we need to make sure that we bring material attributes uh, into a virtual texture map. In order to do so, we can take that material, these material attributes, and bring that into a get material attribute um, option here. And then when you see these attributes, we have exactly base color, specular, roughness, and normal uh, specified, which we need for the RVT. So uh, it's actually fairly straightforward because all we want to do is we bring that material, these material attributes into our RVT, the runtime virtual texture output, base to base, spec to spec, rough to rough, and normal to normal. But as you can see, the normal needs to be translated from a tangent space to world space in order to work. And for the world height, we need an absolute world position uh, running through a mask and um, the opacity is set to one here. That's it. So this is basically what we need for the landscape material to make sure it runs uh, or it, it's feeding it into the runtime virtual texture output node. So now we save this. Again, uh, the landscape material is done, but if we would go back here, we can still see there's nothing working, right? So the next thing what we have to do is we have to take here for the material from the cliff. So we go into the instance and then we go to the parent and we see that's the material from the cliff. But what we want to do now is we want to make sure that we can blend the landscape material with the cliff material here. And I created also here the network for you. So you just can copy and paste it. Um, and briefly explain it here as well. As you can see, we have the landscape material with the runtime virtual texture. And then we want to blend this with any other material that comes into slot B. And we blend it also with, you know, you know like these parameters here. And also with the height information of that um, virtual texture. So you also notice the runtime virtual texture that can't be, that slot can't be empty. So when you select that, you need to make sure that you have the correct RVT uh, texture selected, what we just created. So to recap here in the Fatty Bull um, uh, textures, what we created is the RVT height and the RVT landscape. So here you want to make sure that the RVT landscape is assigned to. If this would be empty, make sure it is in there. And then here you want to make sure that the RVT height information is of course also assigned to, okay? So once this is done, all we have to do now is bring this up here a little bit more that it's easier for you to see, is to make sure that we are blending now the materials together. The only thing that what we have to do here now is drag and drop the cliff material into here, then remove that node by pressing Alt and left mouse button. You can unlink that pin and then bring it back in here. Now this is the setup. Now you can always copy these nodes here, of course, but to make it a little bit easier, I created for you then material functions you can plug in and then we can also have a look at it, how it works and what other issues you run into. So now everything is actually set up. And at this point, you would think if you go back now to your level and you 
bring your material or like your object up and down, everything is taken care for and you should see it. First of all, let's check the material from the cliff now. And what you will find now is here the um, parameters that you can blend uh, the material. You can basically see here, right? You can see uh, how something is happening. It definitely has an impact. But what happens over and over again when you set it up like this is that it seems like you get it only, you get this dark, these dark spots, and that's very common. A lot of people contacted me and they said, like, Bernard, I followed lots of tutorials, but I'm running always into that issue. But nobody's addressing that issue, is talking about it, what's causing it. So again, once you created the landscape, you want to make sure that the RVT height and the RVT landscape is assigned. And then also you want to make sure that when you created the RVT height, that you also picked um, the landscape and set the bounds. And when you do that, it takes a little bit time to calculate and you need to do the same once the calculation is done again with the uh, RVT landscape. So as you can see here, uh, the landscape is not selected. So you se select the picker, select it, and then you click set bounds and what's really crazy is this is happening a lot also to me even in the tutorial in the presentation you see like even if everything is set up correctly it's still not reading the information um, and that seems to be an issue in the calculation with the landscape so <laughs> the crazy thing is we didn't create or paint anything on this landscape yet that means you could literally go in and delete the landscape. You see that also these virtual texture components are connected, you get this warning. And then you basically say like, let's create a new landscape. And here we are. And then when you have this new landscape created, now you have to go into the virtual texture. Let's first also assign the, the material to it so we can actually see it. So now you see the material is assigned, but the landscape itself uh, still needs to have uh, the two arrays, the height and the landscape assigned. And you see here now, this is a failure. So you need to basically reassign it, set the bounds. And then in the landscape, you have to reassign it and set the bounds. And now it's working, you see, and then once the volumes are also reassigned and it calculated it correctly, you also see then here the height information and the, the little thumbnails in the preview here, and then you know you're good to go. And what I recommend is before you really go into sculpting the landscape, make sure that the blending works on your landscape before you go in and create all those um, you know, before you do all the work on the landscape, because you want to make sure that the volumes are working, it's calculating, and then the materials you set up, the blending also works. And you can change now the blending height, of course, like how high it should go up, but you can also change then the contrast. So how strong do you want to have this effect, um, basically on the side, you know, appearing. So, and this is really up to you. You can also have a, a sharp line where like you fade in this blending as, as you please. But that's super cool because now you have obviously created a blending material with those assets that you can blend seamless, seamless together and it looks pretty good.